What I'm going to talk about today is, is bottomland deer, some swamp deer. This project started in 2006 under the direction of Dr. Michael Chamberlain, my professor, and Scott Durham, who's also here today. And what LSU and Louisiana wanted to do was look at the deer in Louisiana and find a little bit more information about them. They've been studied all across the United States, but not a whole lot's been done here on free range and deer. And when you think about deer, you think about two things. You can think about two things. You can think about an economic value. In 2006, there was a little over 200,000 deer hunters in Louisiana. That broke down and basically three out of four hunters in Louisiana hunted deer. If you put that into numbers, you're looking at $525 million in Louisiana in hunting. And of that, $286 million comes from big game alone. So basically, deer is money. You break it down per hunter in 2006, you were looking at right at $1,400 per hunter in 2006. And I know most of us could probably laugh at $1,300, $1,400 in a year. Just in that picture alone, you're looking at a $500 cuttyback and a $200 feeder and a $7, $7 sack of rice bran, right, right. And the four-wheeler to stand on the back of it, right. And the four-wheeler to stand on the back of it to fill that feeder up. Right. So aside from the economic value, which we won't talk about or tell our wives about, uh, recreational value we could deem more than likely is priceless, right? So that's, that's what it really boils down to. Also, quality deer management is the reason y'all are here today, partly the reason y'all are here today. And it's grown in popularity, started back in the mid-80s, and it's grown especially here down in the south, from here to Georgia, just blowing up. And y'all are here today basically because of it. So I don't need to tell y'all what it is, but that's QDM in a nutshell. Their basic principles stand on making sure you're keeping check on your does, you're protecting your younger bucks to let them mature to older age classes, and then you're educating everybody in the group. And that's why y'all are here today, is the education part of the, part of the program. So as far as deer management in Louisiana as it currently stands, like I said, in 2006, it was over 200,000 deer hunters, and it was about 17 million acres in deer habitat in Louisiana. As far as state-run programs, DMAP is a common one that y'all probably have heard of. There's about 416 cooperators, and there's 850,000 acres in bottomlands alone. LADT is another program, <coughs> about 450 cooperators at, at almost 800,000 acres there also. So combine those two programs together and you're looking at over 1.6 million acres of land that are being managed in some type of way. They're getting data from those lands as well. So if you look at those three programs, LADT, DMAP, and QDMA, you're basically climbing the management intensity ladder. So LADT basically doesn't require a whole lot of data collection at all. You just get deer tags and you can shoot antlerless deer under those deer tags and report how many you've shot. DMAP, you go a little further, you're actually collecting jawbones, so that's another piece of data. You get into QDMA and you kind of combine all these pieces of data and you're educating yourself and looking for more data. So that's where this project kind of comes in. And the common ground from all of those different pieces, they all use data to formulate management recommendations. And the data that we're talking about can be a variety of different, can come from a variety of different sources. It could be reproductive data, it could be harvest data, which is commonly, you know, you find that in DMAP clubs. It could be space use data or survival data. And hopefully managers or biologists use a combination of all these pieces if they're available. In the case of Louisiana, these bottom two, space use and survival, those are the pieces that Louisiana is missing. So that's why in 2006, LSU got together wildlife fisheries and started this study to look at home range, core area, and survival. Space use has been extensively studied all across the United States. It, it varies depending on the habitat and where you're at. Um, in Louisiana, there was only one study done basically, and that was back in uh, 1968 when telemetry was really primitive, and the study was based on three females. So that's a while back, this is a little newer. Survival data, it's been studied elsewhere, but not here. So the objectives for the study was first look at space use, find out how much land a male or a female deer is using in a year or a season. And then, what about that deer's chance of surviving a season or a year? What's its survival? Really specific to quality deer management is what is the fate of a year and a half old deer? When y'all pass on that spike or that six point, does he make it to the next year? Is he killed by hunters on an adjacent property? Does he die of disease? And then lastly, 
what are the factors of mortality that are affecting deer on these lands? Is it just hunters? Is it just bullets that are killing deer? Or is it disease or coyotes or cars for that matter? So basically what I set out to do, my marching orders were to trap some deer, radio collar them, and follow them around. And that's basically what I've done for the last three years. The study area, some of y'all might be familiar with it. If you're driving from Baton Rouge to Lafayette, it's between Lobdale and Gross Tet. A lot of times y'all see deer on the side of the road. We actually had deer with collars that used the interstate, the side of the interstates to feed, and one of them got hit on the interstate, which I'll talk about later. So it's West Baton Rouge and Iberville parishes. It was basically the, the eastern end was eight miles from LSU, which made it convenient because it was possible to do telemetry and make it to an LSU game in the same day. <laughs> Bonus. Um, the land was private land, and this picture on the right basically shows you all the black triangles are where we caught deer at, and then the orange dots are where deer were located at at various times during the study, more or less in the same spots, but the ones in the outskirts are um, deer that dispersed. I'll talk about them later. But it's basically 40,000 acres, and it was primarily owned by one major landowner that managed the land for timber but leased out hunting rights. That landowner and wildlife fisheries formed a QDM cooperative, and it was basically all the Wilbert leases, Wilbert's a land company, and then also some of the other landowners like Mr. Kenny Hernandez, some of his property was also enrolled inside that quality of your management cooperative. So it was right at 40,000 acres, and they were all managed under one common goal. That's the idea of a cooperative. And it was based on QDM. So again, liberal doe harvest, protect the young bucks, and eventually they wanted to increase the mature buck harvest. As far as protecting young bucks, often the most common way to do it is using antler restrictions. That's what you see most of the times. And that could be either inside, inside spread, main beam length, number of points, or a combination of all those different things. And they're basically determined using local harvest data. The um, biologists will sit down and look at the average antler characteristics of a one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half year old deer. And if you're wanting to protect your two and a halves, well, you set your antler restrictions right above that. So the co-op here, they were looking at a 13 inch inside or a 15 inch main beam as their antler restriction. And that'll come into play in the survival part of it. <coughs> 